Friday night baseball from the K. Kauffman Stadium in Kansas City. Tonight, the first of this three-game weekend series between the Chicago White Sox and the Kansas City Royals. And now, your 2000 Major League Baseball on the show Kansas is City next. Royals. Brad Keller will be on the mound for the series opener. What do we need to know here, Danny? An interesting stat about this guy. Coming into this game, right-handed hitters are hitting below 200 on the season for him as the starting pitcher. So he must be doing something right when he's facing the righties. So here's Yuan Moncada, and we are set for baseball here this evening. The, White Sox, the third baseman, Yuan Moncada. First pitch of the A.B. now. First of three here on a Friday night as the first pitch is in there for strike one. Dan Dero, we take a look at the Royals as they enter play here tonight. They were losers last time out, but still in a decent groove as they'd won four or five prior to that. Yeah, Matty V, we're looking at a team right now. They're just playing some average baseball through four games of this homestand. They split it two and two, D row, and I think they expect a little bit more. Yeah, and you don't want to be playing average baseball in front of your home fans. They need to find a way to win this game and, and, and try and take three out of the first five of this homestand. Nope. And he'll try to get him to chase the fastball there, but he lays off one and two. Coming down in buckets, cats and dogs, insert metaphor here, and the forecast is not showing any signs of relief. You know, one of the big issues is player safety, and right now this field is getting sloppy wet, Matt, and I don't know how much more rain this field can take. Got him to chase out of the zone that time. Johan Moncada becomes the first out of the inning. batter will be Nick Madrigal skied in the air to straightaway left Ben Intendi in pursuit and he tracks it down a nice running play to record the second out now a moment here to check out the White Sox starting lineup Danny any thoughts well there's a lot of people hoping to see a turnaround from Johan Mancata he's coming off a month where he hit in the low 200s I mean he barely put up any resistance at all. That's not what you expect for him, and I'm sure he's working hard to try to figure it out and turn things around. Into the box now, Eloy Jimenez, as he'll look at a fastball too high for ball one. The average hits at a cool 305 entering play, nine homers, and 17 RBIs. Now he starts to chase a pitch outside and he can't pull the bat back in time. It's strike one. Two out, nobody on. Fouled away. Ready on one and two. Easy take there on the sinker well off the outside. Well, you don't see it all that often, but this might be a good time for a 3-2 change. If he can locate it, it's nearly impossible to hit. And we'll have the first base runner of the ball game here as that misses, and it's a two-out walk. Well, he gives up the walk, but that was a really good pitch. Might have been just out of the zone, but not by much. A lot of guys would have gone fishing for that pitch, so sometimes the hitter just outlasts you. Standing in now, Leori Garcia fouled off. The average for him coming in at 322. Two home runs and 14 driven in. 0 oh 1, here it comes. Lifts it into the air to shallow center. And as it turns out, the two out walk doesn't come around to haunt him as that ends the inning. White Sox leave one. It's the White Sox nothing. Royals coming up. You're watching Major League Baseball on the show. Lucas Giolito gets the call for game one of the series. Dan Plezak, what's the word on him? 
hey Matt in a day and age where runs are scored at an alarming rate this guy's been pretty rock solid last three starts ERA under 2.00 not an easy thing to do and you'll know if he's on early if he's good and on point in the first inning that usually means he's going to be rock solid throughout the rest of the game. And now pitch on the way. Adalberto Mondesi is at the plate now and he takes a cold strike. And guys, you take a look at the White Sox entering play here tonight. They've been fairly punchless of late, losing last time out and in fact dropping six of their last seven. Yeah, Matty, I know they've caught a little bit of a losing streak right now, but they got good veteran presence, great veteran presence in that clubhouse. And I bet you someone steps up today and says, this stops. We get it done today, boys. Threw that fastball right by him. He had no chance to get the barrel of that one. And he got him. One out, base is empty, and with it brings the left handed swinging Andrew Benintendi. A high fastball is in there. Hey, when you're featuring a mid 90s fastball like this pitcher, attack with that pitch. Get ahead, get the offense on their toes. That opens up the off speed pitches later in the game. 0 oh 2 the count to Benintendi and set up behind the plate is Ricky Holiday as you see the rest of our umpiring crew there. Hey D Rowe, you better be up there ready to swing with Ricky Holiday behind the plate particularly on that high pitch. Yeah and I'm, I don't like that Dan as an offensive player that's the one pitch that you almost can't get to with a power guy on the mound. I'm OK with you giving a little bit on the corners but you start giving north it makes it super tough on the hitters. Whit Merrifield next to hit. As he looks at a fastball that's in there for strike one. Past history with Lucas Giolito, he's totaled four hits in 28 tries. He also has one home run. The wind up and the 0 1. And it's 1 and 1. Going to be a long day if he executes like this, punching tickets right out of the gate. Out in front of a fastball as this is ripped down the left field line. That's going to be a fair ball. Not in time, and he's in there with a double. As we look again at that double here, you can see that he was thinking too right out of the box. Smashed it down the line, and that was some great hustle to beat the throw to second to earn himself a double. In is Jorge Soler as he will take a fastball in there at the knees for strike one. Have to find a way to get that guy home from second now. Never know how important these early runs can be. And he fouls this one off. On 0 2 here, he doesn't have to give in with a great pitch to hit. He's got a base open. So he has to focus on making a good pitch right here. One ball and two strikes to count. From the stretch, the one two. Got him swinging, and that will end the inning. Two out double left stranded. An inning in the books, no score on the show. As we begin the second here in Kansas City, here's Heidi with an update on the weather conditions. Matt, I am hearing that heavier rain is expected to pass through the ballpark at some point later in the game. The umpiring crew would, of course, like to get this one in uninterrupted, but it is possible that we could be looking at some sort of a delay if they determine the weather is impacting the play on the field. All right, Heidi, thanks. We'll hope for the best, of course, but guys, you have to assume these players are probably going to be impacted by this weather at least a little. Yeah, Matty, 100 percent it's going to be bothersome. They're going to have to watch their spikes. They're going to have to maybe gather themselves to get that extra grip on the baseball. But from a position player standpoint, you just can't lose focus. Starting pitchers are the ones that are going to have the most problems with it. 2 and 0 oh now. Too high, and it's three and zero. Oh. 
He's really going to need to keep the walks down in this start. He's in danger of walking the second guy in two innings here. And he can't get out of the way there. So the leadoff man will be aboard to open up the inning. Oh, and that was a big mistake right there. This guy might be their best base stealing threat in the lineup. So now he's got a chance to move into scoring position without even putting the ball into play. First pitch of the A.B. now. Tim Anderson stands in as he looks at bowl one here. Lifetime against this particular arm. He's got two hits in 17 at bats. He's also been a strikeout victim six times. Now a throw over. A dive but he's back. Ready with the 1-0 pitch. And he lays off a fastball here that looked pretty good, but it's 2 and 0. This is why I love having athleticism and speed on your team. You can tell the runner on first base is certainly messing with the mechanics of the pitcher. In the air to straightaway right. Under this one is Soler, and he'll handle it for the first out. So here's how the Kansas City Royals are positioned defensively. And let's take a look at Michael Taylor. The ability again to play center field both corners to go get the balls in both gaps and have a strong arm. So here's the slugging first baseman Jose Abreu now. As he'll go after the first pitch and bounce it into foul territory. He'll enter play here with an average just over 250. Four home runs and 11 RBIs. Here's the 0 1 pitch. He swings and misses. Throw down. And it's not in time as he's in well ahead of the throw. We all know this team is struggling right now. They're on a losing streak. So when that's the case, sometimes you need to be a little bit more aggressive and try to put some pressure on your opponents. Stolen bases are a good way of doing that. So we'll see if it pays off on the scoreboard for him right now. And this one's inside and high. One and two down. Hey, that 0 2 fastball wasn't even close, but I'm hit right now. I'm still sitting on that heater. And he'll try to hold back, but he won't be able to as that's ruled a swing, and there are two away now. Fooled him just enough with that pitch to get him to go around, according to the umpire. Sometimes it can be really tough for these big, strong guys because once they're committed to swinging, it's hard for them to slow their swings down, and that appeared to be the case there. He's set. Here it comes. Jonathan Lucroy is in with two away as he takes a ball 1 0. Oh, pretty healthy hack that time. It's 1 and 1. Hey, that was a nasty pitch right there. Ton of rotation on that ball. You could almost see the red dot from up here. Nasty death. Sinker misses that time, and it's 2 and 1. Tried to crush that ball and now perhaps needs to shorten up with two strikes. No score here as we play inning number two. Trying to nibble here and he misses to run it full now. Three and two. Some pitchers fall into the trap of giving in on three and two because they don't want to walk the guy. But with the base open, it's not the end of the world if you do. You still need to. Uh, just a sec now as that ball finds its way into the outfield, a base hit. And they're not going to get him. He's in there at the plate. Hey, this team's been in a pretty bad funk, D Earl. They've had a difficult time scoring and winning any game. So to strike early, that RBI single right there is awfully big. Yeah, and hopefully the pitcher's able to breathe a sigh of relief, Dan, like you say all the time. Give me some early runs and let me relax and attack the zone. I've always said, D Earl, you score me six runs, I'm going to win a lot of games. <laughs> Blake Rutherford is the batter now as he looks at a ball of 1 and 0 trying to keep things going now with a runner at first following the RBI single. And it's fouled away. Luke Roy is off of first with two away. And that change up makes him jump a swing and a miss. Pitcher's got options here. He looked a little bit out front. Might be able to rush a fastball by him.
Here comes the one two. He is swung on and missed. He got him. So a run on one hit, no errors, and a man left. Here's the catcher, Salvador Perez. He's set to lead off the home half of the second. The catcher, Salvador Perez. First pitch on its way. The wind up and the 0 1. Behind 0 2 now. Slapped hard the opposite way, but this is gloved over there at first as he was in the right spot at the right time. One away. All right, guys, here's a defensive alignment for the Chicago White Sox. And I'm going to focus today on Tim Anderson. And when I say his name, I think quick feet. Not only defensively at the shortstop position, but also putting the defense on their heels. When he gets on base, look for him to take off. And he's got a strong arm as well from shortstop. Hunter Dozier digging in now. A ball of no strikes. That average for him up in the 360s now. Seven homers and 16 RBIs. A ball and a strike. One and two now. White Sox are out to an early 1 0 lead as we play the second. Oh, and this is swung on and missed. Four strikeouts already, and that's out number two. Boy, there's nothing like seeing a good power pitcher that has a good that fastball. And what does he do? He just throws man. this good fastball right by, brings the express. No chance to put that ball in play. So now Carlos Santana. He swings and hits it foul off to the right and out of play. And he's got that batting lineup near the 300 mark entering play. And a pitch in the dirt as he lays off. It's one and one. Past history with Lucas Giolito. Just a three for 13 batting line. He's taken him deep once. A ball and two strikes now. Well off the plate with the change of pace. That's ball two. Bouncer to the left side. Moncada gloves it. Throw over to Abreu is in time, and with it, the side is retired. Royals go down one, two, three. They're down one, nothing. So here is Yohan Moncada. He was a strikeout victim to open up the ball game. Infield shifted well to the right. Here's the first pitch. No strike. Swing line drive. That's going to be trouble. Around first, he's digging for second. And he'll pull into second here with nobody out. So a good job there as he opens up the third inning with a two base hit. And as we give you a look at the White Sox leaderboard, you can see his total there. Currently second best on the ball club. To the plate now, Nick Madrigal. As he'll take a look at a strike right down the middle, it's 0 and 1. 0 for 1 for him here in this one.
from the belt the pitch lifted in the air out towards left center and that'll get down out there for extra bases and this one will bounce into the wall and the run will score from second to make this a two nothing ball game back to back doubles now and that's a great way to get an inning going the leadoff man shows him how it's done and he comes right behind him following suit lacing a double of his own could be a big inning if this continues. Plate now, Elo Jimenez. As the first pitch misses to him, it's ball one. Well, I think he's got to find a way out of this jam and limit the damage. If he's unable to do that, this game could get away from him. The 1 0. Rip down the line. And this will stay inside the third base bag. A fair ball. On to second, but he's in safely as a run will score on the play as well. And time will be called here as the pitching coach heads out to the mound and hopefully try and settle this guy down a bit. Into the box, Leori Garcia. As the first pitch to him is in there for a called strike one. 0 for 1 here in the early going. The 0 1 pitch misses off the plate. Jimenez leads off second with nobody out. Liner towards second, but an atom ball right to him for the first down. Now that the center fielder, Luis Roberts. One out here in the Shy Sox third, and that brings up Luis Robert. First pitch on its way. Had him reaching that time. It's strike one. What I love right there is just the freedom in that hack. He ain't trying to do anything but hit the baseball as far as he can. Swing and a miss, and he's in trouble now. 0 oh 2. Hey, watch out. This hitter's got one thing on his mind. Runner at second here with one man out. Pitch is way outside, and he can't even get a glove on it. And he'll rein it in as the count moves to 1 and 2. From the belt, the pitch. <laughs> On a line, that's a base hit. Jimenez rounds the corner and is headed home. Now it's cut off. A throw to the plate. A tag from Perez. He's out at the plate. That'll bring up the shortstop Tim Anderson as he pops the first pitch foul behind the plate. Flew out in his only at bat so far. And they pitch out here, but nothing's going on. A runner on first with two away. And it's two balls and a strike for Tim Anderson. Two balls, one strike. The 2 1. Hit hard to third. Dozier scoops it up. Merrifield's right there to take the routine throw and retire the side. 
So two runs on four base hits. No errors and a runner left on. We'll move on to the bottom of inning number three. It's the White Sox three and the Royals nothing. We're back as the Royals prepare for their at bats here in the third. This lineup has been a huge bright spot for the ball club this season. Entering the day, they lead all of baseball in both team batting average and on base percentage. Talking with a few coaches during batting practice, they said that not only speaks to the patient approach that they preach as a club, but also to the talent of these players and their willingness to buy in. It's a confident bunch, and clearly they have the ability to make things very difficult on opposing pitchers. Matt? Okay, thank you, Heidi. The designated hitter, Ryan McGrew. He's ready. Here's the first pitch. Ryan McBroom is in to start things off here as he looks at a called strike. It's nothing and one. Drives it out to deep right center field. Robert is there and he has it for the out. Batting ninth, the center fielder, Michael A. Taylor. Next to stand in is Michael Taylor. First delivery to him. The offense better get it going right here because they certainly can tell from their dugout this guy is carrying himself with a presence out on the mound. He's got feel for all his pitches. Into the windup, here comes the 0 and 1. Swing and he takes this the other way to right. Rutherford is there, two down. Well, we've mentioned the conditions aren't Number ideal with the rain coming down, and that can make every play a little bit of an adventure. You really have to concentrate, and he did there to haul it down. Adalberto Mondesi stands in as he checks his swing here for strike one. Bases are empty here with two men out. Changeup gets him out in front for strike two. Hey, make no mistake about it. This lineup's going to have to get going and get a little bit more aggressive. This guy's pounding the zone. Protecting on 0 2, so we'll do it again. And now, pitch on the way. Fouled away. <laughs> Ready with another 0 2. Grounded back up the middle. And a great diving effort there, but it'll just tip off his glove, and it's a base hit. Nice effort by the shortstop right there. Kept it in front of him. That's, a, that's all he could do right there, Dan. You know, Dio, in a spot like that, that's an infield single. That's a tough play. Just to knock that ball down was a pretty good job, but any way you look at it, that should be scored a base hit, and I'm sure it was. Now here's the first offering. Andrew Benintendi is in with two away now as he looks at a called strike one. No doubt this is a steal situation right here. Two outs and the leadoff hitter on first. This is the time you roll the dice and hope he gets in the scoring position where he can get a hit to bring him home. The 1-1. One, one. In the dirt and now let's see. And it's not in time as he's in well ahead of the throw. And he'll make it into scoring position here with two away as that'll be scored a wild pitch. Well, this inning was looking routine, and then with one base hit and a wild pitch later, things are looking a lot different. Now a base hit scores a run, got a reset on the mound, and makes some good pitches here. Mondesi stands at second with two gone. Late on that one as it's fouled off to the left side. Hey, that's just a great mix of pitches right there, and that's what this guy's going to do if he's going to keep this team off balance. Here now the 2-2. Weak roller right side. Scooped up. 
throw to first with time to spare and the side is retired. Royals leave one. They trail it here three to nothing. Start of the fourth upcoming but first Heidi Watney is standing by with a report. Well Matt I had a chance to discuss the state of the White Sox offense with their manager in between innings and flat out he was very pleased with the quality of their at bats. They've been able to push across three runs to this point but they've also made the opposition work extremely hard. He's thrown a lot of pitches and they think they're going to have a good opportunity to push across a lot more runs as he tires or as they get into that bullpen. OK thank you Heidi. All set for the start of the inning and next to bat will be the first baseman Jose Abreu. For me this is an important add on inning here. Their little lead is cute. I like it but keeping the pressure on building that lead. That's how you bury someone. Ball one to start the at bat. That evens it up one and one. Pitch on the way. And he takes ball two, and it's two and one. Into the windup and the pitch. Hey, usually the second time through the order, you start seeing an incorporation of some more off speed stuff. But this guy's locating, feeling really good about his fastball. Two back to back. And a fastball swung on and missed as they set him down for the second time here tonight. And while we have a moment, here's a look at the Royals' road to the show report. Two guys there that this organization has to be happy about right now. In is the catcher Jonathan Lucroy. As the first pitch to him is off the plate for a ball 1 and 0. Oh. Looking at his lifetime numbers, Lucroy is slugging just a little over 400. Not a huge threat, but he can certainly square one up on occasion. Bat explodes as this has popped up. And he'll find a way to dodge the shrapnel out there to make the play for route number two. The batter, the right fielder, Blake. Rutherford. Next to dig in Blake Rutherford looking to put the ball in play here. He went down on strikes in his first at bat. Yeah and kind of shocked he got blown away with a fastball. You could tell he was late on that one and we'll see if he tries to cheat to something this A.B. Left side but well foul. I think for every player for every former player that swing right there is the reason we need to extend the netting without question. Want the fans to be safe. A ball and a strike now. The 1 1. Line drive snagged on a short hop. And a close play at the bag, but a good stretch by the first baseman got the out, and the inning is over. Off a of one leg in the hole, falling away. That is pure magic. More from Kauffman Stadium right after a quick break. Bottom of the inning now, and that'll bring up the second baseman, Whit Merrifield. The second baseman, Whit. First pitch on the way. Hit on the ground out to short. Anderson picks it up, throws in time, and that's out number one. So now it'll be the four hole hitter Jorge Soler. He went down on strikes in his last at bat. Yeah he's got to put that one behind him especially with runners in scoring position. Those punch outs will stick with you a little longer. They'll try and entice him with a high fastball but he wouldn't commit it's ball one. And he'll try to check his swing here, but he'll have no such luck. It's strike one. No runs, two hits, and no errors so far for the Royals. And it's one and two. One and two. A 
now and he can't catch up to the fastball as he swings and misses for the second out. That's his second strikeout of the game. I would be surprised if a coach a catcher, finds him in the 13. dugout and gives him a little talk about Salvador. shortening up and putting the ball in play. Right. Good things tend to happen when you do that in these kinds of conditions. And up steps Salvador Perez. He offers at it and sends a bouncer out to short. Anderson scoops it up, throw cleanly into first, and that ends the inning. So nothing happening this time around. On to the top of inning number five we go, and the White Sox are out in front, three to nothing. Into the box, Johan Moncada will start off the fifth in this one. Infield in the overshift here. Now the pitch. And right into the shift. Uh, this gets foul. It's 0 and 1. Pitch on the way. High in the air out to center field. Taylor is right there. One gone. Batter number one. So with the fly out there coming on the fastball seems like an appropriate time to check out our pitch speed comparison for these two starters and as you see there just one mile an hour separating these two arms so far 96 on one hand 95 on the other. Next it'll be Nick Madrigal he's one for two in this one. First pitch of the A.B. on its way. The 0 1 on its way. This is hit high in the air out toward left center. Chasing after it is Taylor. He tracks it down and makes the play to record the second out. Now batting, left fielder, Aloy Jimenez. Base is empty, two away. And up next, the exciting Eloy Jimenez. First pitch on the way. Ball. And that misses for ball one. Hey, they say solos won't kill us, but I got to believe this guy's looking to do exactly that. Three runs, five hits, and no errors so far for the White Sox. A bouncer up the middle. Over to first, and that retires the side. Down in order go the White Sox. They lead it three to nothing. Welcome back for the bottom of the fifth. Here's Heidi Watney. Well, Matt, Royals manager Mike Matheny talked with me in between innings about his lineup's offensive production, and he told me he's pretty unhappy with their discipline at the plate in this one. He said their pitch selection has been the main reason for their struggles today, as far too often they've been swinging at pitches outside the strike zone. That's leading to a lot of soft contact and easy outs, so the focus going forward is on shrinking the zone and forcing the opposing pitching to throw more strikes. Good stuff, Heidi. Thanks. And that brings in Hunter Dozier. He leads off in the bottom of the fifth as they look to break through on the scoreboard for the first time in this one. Matty, I'd like to see them change up their offensive approach a little bit right now. Maybe get a little bit more aggressive in the strike zone. I just feel like this pitcher is settling into a rhythm, and they're going to hand it over to the bullpen eventually, and this game's going to be over. And he gets ahead here with the fastball. Strike one. Wind up and the 0 1. I think a big reason why he's been so effective in this one that he's been just about getting ahead of every hitter. Seems like every one of them are 0 2, 1 and 2, and it's just about every at bat. And when that's the case, your chances of getting a good pitch to hit are way worse. 
slapped hard the opposite way. That gets down. He's got himself a base hit. Around first, digging for two. And the Royals are going to get a man into scoring position right away on the leadoff double. I'll tell you, that's one of the first good swings we've seen anybody put on this guy so far. He's been throwing the ball really well, but that was one of the few mistakes we've seen him make. Here's Carlos Santana now as he'll take a look at ball one. He's 0 for 1 after grounding out in his only trip to the plate so far. Now the 1-0. Taken high and deep to right. Looking up is the right fielder at the track. The wall. A leap at the wall, but he can't bring this one back. It's a home run. A two run blast to straight away right field home run number five on the year and the Royals have cut it to one it's now a three to two score. Well they were a lot more comfortable up three than they are now only up by one that just goes to show you one pitch one two run shot and the entire complexion of the game can change just like that. Now time is called here as we'll get a trip to the mound. At the plate, Ryan McBroom. He'll swing and lift a ball foul off to the left and out of play. Flyed out in his first at bat, so make him 0 for 1 so far. And that's in there as well. 0 and 2 now. No outs, nobody on. All right back to him on the mound. And he'll flip on to first to record the out. Now back, center fielder, Michael A. Taylor. So the next to bat will be Michael Taylor. Hit it hard but lined out in his first at bat. Yeah, pretty unlucky right there, Matty. Squared up a fastball nicely, and that's all you can do. You just want to be on time for the heater, and he's prepared for this next A.B. Lucky he got a piece right there. He was definitely late on that pitch after seeing a previous off-speed pitch. The 1-1. One, one. And a 2-1 slider is looked at for a called strike two. Still only one out in the inning. Three and two, a full count to the Royal center fielder. It'd be great right here if he was able to work himself on base. You got the leadoff hitter on deck, and you know the middle of the order is coming up right behind him. And he takes ball four. So a good job out of the nine hole and getting on base as we go back to the top of the order. What's the saying? Uh, when you find yourself in a hole, the first thing you should do is stop digging. Well, the guy on the bump obviously hasn't heard that one. Back to the top of the order now. And striding toward the plate next will be Adalberto Mondesi. First pitch coming. Here it is. Fastball in there for a called strike. Hey, this is a left-handed hitter that can fly down the line. If they want to turn two, they're going to have to be almost perfect. That's in there. And he's deep in the hole now, 0-2.
fouled off. The next 0 2 pulls this one into the air out into right field. Right fielder is on the run. He gets there and makes the play for the second out of the inning. Now batting, the left fielder, Andrew Benintendi. So two are gone now in the Royal Fifth. And up next, the exciting left handed bat of Andrew Benintendi. Here's the first pitch to him. A ball and no strikes. From an offensive standpoint, this is where you got to push the throttle right here. You've had a couple hits in the inning. You've got a 1 0 count leverage. Let's see if he can gap something. And a strike to even the count. 1 and 1. Taylor leads off first with a pair of outs in the inning. Now a good pitch around the knees, but it doesn't quite catch the bottom of the zone. You know, he was really pounding the strike zone early on, but he's kind of gotten away from that here a bit. He might just need a little reminder to attack hitters and trust his stuff. Abreu will take this one over to first, and with that, the inning ends. But two come across to score in the inning, courtesy of this two-run home run. We're through five innings here tonight. It's now a 3-2 ball game. So to the plate is the White Sox D.H. Leury Garcia, he'll lead things off here in this one-run contest. Now here's the first offering. Swing and a little blooper to center. Merrifield backs up a bit and he takes charge for the first out. Every pitcher loves to get quick outs, right? How about that? One pitch, one out, a pop-up to start the inning. One out for Chicago here in the sixth. And in the bat next is Luis Robert. Here's a slider to start things out. Looked at for ball one. Some action out in the bullpen. Couple of right-handers starting to loosen up. And he jumps at a changeup, a swing and a miss. It's been more than two innings since this guy's allowed anyone to reach base. He looks pretty unbeatable on the bump right now. Into the windup, here's the two and one pitch. Just behind the fastball there, two strikes now. Count all the way full to the White Sox center fielder. Tim Anderson waits on deck. Three twos are scored here in inning number six. Oh, and he leaves the fastball up there. Mistake in location. He is going to pay for it dearly as that ball is sent over the wall. A home run. So a solo shot here to left center field. Eighth home run on the season for him. And it's given the White Sox a 4-2 lead. Most pitchers aren't going to throw this guy much of a fastball to try to challenge him because this guy can hit him a mile just like he did with that swing right there. Impressive power. Now here comes the Royal Skipper up the stairs on his way to the mound. And he's looking to the bullpen here, so it would appear that's all for his starter tonight. Gone after five and a third here as he never really found his groove in this one. Scott Barlow, the right handed reliever standing 6 3, gets the ball now out of the bullpen. And the next to bat will be Tim Anderson. And Dan, after that home run, it looks like they might be able to end this losing streak that they've been mired in. Yeah, and a win at this level feels really good, especially when it's been a while. They're on their way if they can play well the rest of the game. One ball, no strikes to count. Hey, if you're going to throw a pitch like that to this guy, that's right where you want to miss. Any lower, and he'll probably make you pay for it. The 1-0. In the air now, out to right field. 
He lays out for it, but he can't pull it in. And this will bang up against the wall. And the offense continues as he's into third with a triple. And this is what good major league hitters do with a pitch on the outer half. They don't try to do too much with it. Just square it up the best you can and drive it to the opposite gap. By the time the outfielders react and get to it, he's well on his way to third. So here's Jose Abreu as he takes a cold strike at the knees. It's 0-1. This is going to be an interesting at bat. I think he has to be pitching for a strikeout here. So we'll see what kind of sequence he uses. Now the 0-1. Runner on third sack fly situation right. Two pitchers down. Really good job of patience trying to get a pitch that he can lift into the air to drive that runner home. Comes at him with the slider there and he gets the strike. Yeah Matt you see the same pitch three times in a row and you find yourself down one and two in the count. Your head starts to get on a swivel here. Is he coming back with it four times or do I have to sit on something else. And the sliders in the dirt as he lays off it for a ball. One out and a runner on third. A full count three balls and two strikes. Good swing on a tough pitch and he'll stick around to see another one. Struck him out. Struck him out again I should say his third punch out of the game. What's your take on all the strikeouts we see in the game today Dan that was his third tonight and it seems we're seeing that a lot more these days. Yeah Matt there's been a real change in philosophy as far as hitting in baseball today. A lot of guys think now that an out is an out a strikeout is just as good as a regular out but we're seeing strikeouts at an alarming rate in baseball right now. Into the box now Jonathan Lucroy one and oh the count one for two in the ball game thus far. The one oh pitch. And he holds up here, but the pitch is a cold strike anyway. His career numbers in this matchup, he's one for two. The 1-1. One, one. And he fouls this one off. One and two, here it comes. Down the line and fair that's a hit and now it'll kick around in the corner and they'll extend their lead even further as the runs in to score from third it's five to two throw won't get them so much of this game is situational hitting guys nice job there. Yeah you've got to find a way to pick your teammates up when you're given the chance and he doesn't try to do too much right here he just takes what's there safely on second and his buddy is high fiving teammates in the dugout. Next in at the plate is Blake Rutherford as the first pitch to him is swung on and missed for strike one. No hits to this point. He's ready. Here's the 0-1. Two out here and a runner at second. Checks his nope. swing here, but he does so in time. Down to two and one. Ball, ball three. You know, I kind of see why his ERA is so high coming into this one. He's just putting these guys in too many good hitters counts. That'll catch up with you real quick. He's set. Here's the 3-1. He pops him up. 
toward the left side of the infield. And Dozier will put it away for out number three. So it's two runs on three hits, no errors, and a runner left on. Part of the order, three, four, and five coming up. It's the White Sox five and the Royals two. Ready to go for the last half of the inning, and that'll bring in the second baseman, Whit Merrifield. Whit Merrifield. Ready to deal. Here comes the first pitch. Nope, that's a ball. Swung on and missed. One and one. one and one. Classic case of the front shoulder flying open on that off speed. Needs to stay compact and stay in the big part of the field. One and two now as that one's fouled off. There's a pitch we haven't seen in a while. It's going to be tough on the hitters if they have to incorporate that into their mindset. Again, another foul ball. And a check swing here, but the bat clearly breaks the plane as he set down for the first out. So with one away, let's give you a look at the standings in the American League's Central Division as you see where these two teams find themselves entering our ball game here today. At the plate now is Jorge Soler. He's hitless in his two at bats so far. First pitch coming, here it is. There's a change up taken, but it finds the zone on the inside. 5 2 is our score here in inning number six. Hit back up the middle. Throw on to first, two gone. The catcher, number 13, Salvador. Ready with the first pitch, here it comes. Sliced hard on the ground. He's got it. Throw in the dirt, but a good scoop at first saves an error as this side is retired. Pretty painless half of the inning, all told. Seventh inning coming up. The White Sox lead this one 5-2. to two. Jake Kalish is on to pitch from the bullpen now to start inning number seven. Johan Moncada will be the first one to greet him as he'll have to turn around and bat from the right side of the plate here. Here it comes. Aye. Oh, 1 here's the pitch. A swinging strike, and now it's 0-2. The beauty of that sequence right there, the fastball in, now to change up away is where do you go as a hitter? Do you cover away? Do you cover the heater in? You can't do both. You have to pick a side of the plate and hope that's where he goes. And it's fouled away. Now another one two and a good bite to that slider as he swings through it for the first out of the inning. So a good job to get the out there but with five runs already surrendered that's not going to do any favors to the team ERA so far this season. And as you see they're two away from the bottom spot in that category 13th best if you will in the AL. 
And now in the box, Nick Madrigal flew out last time up. From the stretch, here's the pitch. Fastball over the outside, but in there for a strike. 5 2 our score as we play inning number seven. Fouled away. The 0 2 pitch is a fastball that misses. And he strikes him out as well. So two punch outs to begin the outing out of the pen. No problems for him on the mound since he's come out of the pen to start this now inning. Back. That's back to back K's and oh he's making it look pretty Man. easy. This has the makings of a good outing so far. So now to the plate Eloy Jimenez as he'll go after the first pitch and bounce it into foul territory. He's working on a one for two game so far. And it's quickly 0 and 2. Two out nobody on. This is on the ground over to first. Santana's got it. Throw on to first, gets him, and the side is retired. One, two, three, go the White Sox, and it remains five to two. Last half of the seventh here, and that'll bring up Hunter Dozier. The third baseman, Hunter. Wheels and deals. Here's the first pitch. This guy's throwing a gem so far. Biggest key 80% of his first pitches have been for strikes. Off the plate and in. It's a ball and a strike. Line hard toward right center. And that's in for his second hit of the afternoon. Hey, excellent job right there, leading off the inning with a base hit. We got to keep this line moving. We cannot stop. Nobody can make an out. We have to find a way to put two men, maybe three men, put some pressure on this defense. Standing in now, Carlos Santana, as he'll pop this one foul off to the left and out of play. A hit in two at bats for him at this point in the ball game. Fouled off. All you want is the leadoff man to get on to start a big inning, maybe get a big rally going to claw your way back into this ball game. Now he gets the ground ball to first. This might be two on to first, and that's the very last thing they needed at this point in the ball game. As there are quickly two away now. That's one of the hardest double plays to turn right there because of the difficult throw the first baseman has to make. No problem this time though, and they get the two outs they were looking for. In now, Ryan McBroom. This will take a look at a slider here that finds the zone for strike one. 0 for 2 for him to this point. And that's a called strike at the letters. Though that looked high from here, it's 0 and 2 now. Your idea of working the count goes out the window. You're frustrated right now, down 0 2. Gotta find a way to grind. A ball and two strikes now. That was a nasty sweeping slider right there. If he was able to just catch the corner a little bit, he would have picked up that backwards K. And 
And he struck him out his seventh of the ball game, and that ends the inning. Royals bats are quiet there, and the deficit remains five to two. New inning set to get underway, and digging in is the DH, the switch hitter, Leori Garcia. Ready to deliver, here comes the first pitch. And now before the 0-1 pitch, a quick stoppage as he steps out. Here it comes. Gets the fastball by him here, and he's in control 0-2. 0-2 count. You could do just about anything you want right now. Up, down, in, out, hard, soft. Good time to be a pitcher. Can't get him to chase. It's one and two. Well, that's a pitch right there. You gotta just lay off. There's a good chance he's gonna throw it on 0-2. And, and if you can recognize it starting down in the zone, you know it's only going to go down from there. And he takes strike three called on the fastball. One gone. 5 2 our score as we get a look inside the numbers. It's our starter comparison for the two gentlemen that took the hill to start the ball game. Luis Robert will stand in yet again as we flash you back to the middle innings. This was a turning point here, a solo home run that was really one of the key at bats of the ball game to this point. from the stretch now the 1 0 pitch is popped up Merrifield is there makes the play and there are two gone now. And now here is Tim Anderson tripled and scored in his last at bat and we'll see what he does for a follow up act here. He's ready. Here's the first pitch. We're in the eighth inning now of a five to two ball game. Check swing but he held up in time ball one. Name of the game out on the mound is to disrupt timing of the hitters in the box. He certainly got this guy on the defensive. Here's the 1 1. Swung on and missed that strike two. Hey, love the confidence in that pitch right there, going right after one of the better hitters on this team, not afraid to execute. Line drive, and that's a base hit in the center field. So that means Jose Abreu will come to the plate here. Well, that's what's difficult about pitching. You have a guy that's up there swinging. Pitch before this takes a big swing and almost falls down, and then he shortens it up and hits a base hit right on the next pitch. Yeah, Dan, that's what we call the old bait and switch right there. You try to go deep, count leverage, get to two strikes, shorten up, and do your job. Andrew Vaughn will look for some two out magic here as he'll pinch hit with two gone and a runner at first. From the belt, kicks and deals. Outside with the fastball that's 1 0. The average not quite where he wants it, down in the 220s. Four home runs and a dozen RBIs. Swing and a ball hit toward the shortstop, Mondesi. Merrifield's right there to take the routine throw and retire the side. A man left for the White Sox. They're still out in front, five to two.
Andrew Vaughn will stay in the ball game as he'll take over at first base. Ready to go for the Royals. The center fielder, Michael A. Hayward. Jose Ruiz is on to pitch out of the bullpen in the bottom half of the eighth. Jose Ruiz. Now the pitch. Michael Taylor is in for the third time now as he takes a called strike. It's 0 and 1. In front of the changeup, and he can't keep it fair. Two strikes on him now. Ready on 0 and 2. I got to one and two. He wasn't even close to swinging right there. That was a stone cold take. The 1 2. And he fouls this one off. Here he comes again. 1 2. I got to count two and two. When you've got a guy that throws a good two seam fastball, you have to be ready for him to try to run it inside and jam you. Good job to lay off that one, but I wouldn't be surprised if we see it again. Here now the 2-2. Down the left field line and deep. And foul. But a foul ball as it holds it 2-2. Two and two. Put that in the memory, May. First time he breaks out a curveball right there, and it's a pretty good one. Here's another 2 2. Trying to nibble here, and he misses to run it full now. 3 and 2. Hey, this has been an epic at bat right here. I don't blame the pitcher for a little nibbling right there. Maybe get a swing and a miss. He didn't bite on that one, so now we go full count. And this is taken in for out number one. The There's a look at the Double final line seven. for the White Sox starter. He was on point from the get go this evening. Matty V, really a solid performance. Seven strong innings pitched in line for the win. Needs some help for the bullpen to close this one out. To the plate now, Adalberto Mondesi. As he'll look at a fastball in there on the outer half, it's 0 and 1. Gotta find a way to scratch at least one across. You do not want to take on the monster closing the game down three. And he falls behind 0 and 2. One and two, the counts of the Royals shortstop. Bases are empty, one man out. Fastball just missed above the zone. These last two guys are making him work quite a bit out there. Both have been long at bats, and all in all, he's had to make 13 throws just to them so far. Just missed with the 2 2 count, and it runs full now. That was another good pitch and a tough call that could have gone either way. He couldn't get him to bite on it again, so the count's gone from 0 2 to 3 2. Two ways to look at this walk. If you're the hitting coach, you say, that's a great AB. Down 0 2 and you work the walk, but if you're a pitcher like me, that's just a case of letting a guy off the hook, and that can really frustrate you. Pulled toward right center field. Long run for the center fielder, but it's the right fielder that gets there to make the catch, and that's the second out of the inning. The batter number 15, second baseman. With Merrifield next to bat, he's working on a one for three thus far. First offering, and he takes ball one. This one's down to third. Moncada fields it cleanly. Eight innings have come and gone now as the inning is over. So no runs on no hits, no errors, and one man left on. Ninth inning coming up. White Sox on top, 5-2. to two.
Jesse Hahn enters from the pen to start the ninth inning as he'll try to keep the score right where it is heading to the bottom of the ninth. So now here is Jonathan Lucroy. Leading off for the White Sox. The catcher, Jonathan Lucroy. Here's the first pitch. And we kick off the ninth inning with a swinging strike here. Nothing in one. Man, this guy's been locked in all game long. I don't know where that ugly swing just came from. Fastball called for strike two. Hey, that's a heck of a pitch right there. If, he, if he's able to execute with that type of velocity, fastballs up and in, I can't imagine. Not only is he going to break a ton of bats today, but he's going to open up that down and away with the soft stuff later in the game. He froze him on the breaking ball that time. Jonathan Lucroy becomes the first out in the ninth inning. At the plate, Blake Rutherford. As the first pitch here is a bit high, it's ball one. It could really use a knock here, 0 for 3 in the game so far. Adam Engel will come on as a pinch hitter to try and make an impact with one away. One out, nobody on. Fastball misses away here. It's 2 and 0. Now a check swing, but he does manage to hold up in time. Ball three. Engel is a guy that has a lot of speed, no doubt about that. And while that's certainly a weapon for him offensively, it could be argued that it benefits him just as much on the defensive side of the ball given the position he plays. And that'll take care of the pinch hitter here for route number two. Now batting the third baseman, Yohan. Next up is Yohan Moncada struck out in his last trip to the plate. Here's the first pitch. And it's fouled away. Han gets the sign. 0 1 on its way. No offer on that one. Two balls and a strike. Count is two and one. And it's two balls and two strikes now. Hey, find a way right here. Two outs. This guy has come in throwing bullets. If he can get this team into the dugout right here with another donut and they regroup, start passing the baton a little bit, we got ourselves some action. Mondesi is there and the side is retired. So they breeze through this half of the inning. So nothing doing in the White Sox ninth. Last chance coming up for KC. They're down here five to two. Adam Engel will stick around as he'll take over in right field. So here's the cleanup hitter, Jorge Soler. He'll lead things off here as we play the bottom of the ninth. Liam Hendricks is the man called on to close this one and earn a save in the ninth. Here's the first pitch to him. Looked like a breaking ball there, but it missed badly. 2 0. Oh. The last thing you want to do when you've got a three run lead in the ninth is give the other guys any sense of hope. It's a good time to challenge here on 2 0, oh, especially since there's a good chance he's taking until he gets a strike. A little too tall that time. 3 and 1 now. If you're at the plate in this situation, you're only thinking one thing, and that is get on base. You got three balls. It has to be perfect over those 17 inches for you to pull a trigger. A walk is as good as a knock right here. 
Got him. And that's the third time we've written a K next to his name in this one. Well, we'll see a lot of these power arms coming out of the bullpen in these days, but it doesn't make it any less impressive to me. I love watching guys come in and blow smoke right by guys. Into the box, Salvador Perez fouled away. He's hitless in three at-bats to this point. A one pitch on its way. Swing and a line drive. But this will get foul for strike two. Bases are empty, one man out. And it's another K. So back-to-back -back strikeout victims to start this relief outing. Well, you have to feel pretty confident about the way now this one's going to end up as a manager. Two hitters, two strikeouts from the closer. There's not a whole lot more he can do to instill confidence that he's going to wrap this thing up without any problem. Stepping in now, Hunter Dozier. And a swing from him yields a foul pop out of play to the right. So far, two for three in this one. And this will be a called strike two. And trouble now as they're down to their final strike tonight. So back-to-back -back sliders for strikes. Does he come back with yet another? Hey, not normally a good plan to throw three consecutive sliders. Swing and a miss. He struck him out, and that'll do it here as the ball game is over. Yeah, that's what you want to do when you're playing on the road. Take it right to the home squad and get a win. Now the pressure is off. If they get one of the next two, the series is theirs. 5-2 the final score tonight. Chicago took the lead in the second inning and rode that until the very end. Lucas Giolito earns win number four on the season. Liam Hendricks hammers down the save his ninth of the year. So that will wrap things up for Mark DeRosa, Dan Plezak, Heidi Watney, and our whole crew. I'm Matt Vaskersian. You've been watching MLB The Show. For more, head to theshow.com.